What's up everybody and welcome back to another Addicted Fishing video. Today I'm here to teach you guys and I'm going to show you in my opinion one of the most exciting and fun new ways that there is to go target trout. If you guys want to learn more about that stick around it's going to be an awesome episode. So, like the thumbnail said, everybody, we're talking twitching jigs. And I have to thank and give a big shout out to my man, Bill Herzog, who was the guy about two years ago, two winters ago, we went out and filmed an episode. Here's a quick little clip of it. Plugs out while you guys fish. Oh, there oh, we go. Oh, yeah. what's up, oh, big boy? It's you. Yo, <laughs> you. Wow. What size of this cat, huh? Look Holy that. crap. That is a real red side trout yes, right there. It is. And this man showed me something I never thought was gonna be true. I've twitched jigs for salmon, I've twitched jigs for steelhead. I've tried to basically target every species that there is with a twitching jig, and I never thought about trout. This guy showed me the ways, and I'm about to show you guys the ways. What we're talking about today is twitching sculpin jigs, and different styles of sculpin jigs, different colors, and kind of different lure presentations for any kind of trout species that there is swimming in North America or anywhere in the world. The thing you're gonna want first is the proper rod for fishing this technique. I use a very light rod with a very sensitive tip. One, because it's really fun when these fish hit, and two, because it gives that live action on that sculpin jig. The idea of this jig is we're fishing a prey to a predatory fish, and that's exactly why we're using these patterns and we're using these styles of lures that look just like the actual fish that is a sculpin, or some people might know it as a bullhead. We'll put a little picture of that little critter right here in the corner. And these fish, a lot of times the bigger fish in a river system or in a lake system are gonna be carnivorous and they're gonna be feeding on these bigger kinds of prey like this, like a sculpin or other tiny bait fish. The rod I'm using here today is an Okuma SST. We're sponsored by Okuma here at Addicted and I absolutely love all their ultra light and their trout rods in particular. The uh, Salilo series works really good, but I love this SST, it's a great bang for the buck. And this one is a two to six pound, seven and a half foot rod. And I really love that two to six pound because as you can see, that rod has a ton of flex behind it. And when I'm working that little jig through that water column and I'm making that thing swim, I'm really getting a good action off that tip. And when the fish does bite it, this thing loads up well, gets that hook stuck in their mouth and it's game on. Oh, oh, that's a big one, that's a big one. Yeah. That's a real, yeah, yeah, oh yeah, God, yeah, yeah, that's a big yeah. one. That's oh, a good God. fish there, Kevin. The reel I have on this is any kind of 30 series reel if you're talking Okuma or a 3000 series reel if you're talking any other kind of brand. I like to stick with that smaller reel because on such a small rod, you don't want that big cumbersome 4,000 or 40 series or 50 series reel because it's just too much weight at the back end of that rod and you're gonna have a hard time getting a good presentation with that. What I have on here for line is a gray Addicted Enforcer braid. I love the Addicted Enforcer braid. We make it with tough line. You can find it on our website, addicted.fishing. And it's a really, really great line for this kind of fishing because it's, it casts so smoothly through your guides. And that 20 pound seems heavy, but the diameter of this line, especially in the tough line and that Addicted Enforcer, is very, very small. So a 20 pound really fishes like a 10 if you're gonna be using any kind of fluorocarbon or monofilament. I love having the 20 pound because one, you really have some backbone and some good strong line to be able to fight the big fish that you might be catching on these jigs. And two, the amount of sensitivity that you get when you're jigging with that nice braided line is absolutely imperative to one, not losing your jig, and two, feeling the bite when these fish hit. So one of the most important things on this is I'm not gonna tie that braid straight to my jig itself. One, because trout are pretty weary creatures, especially the big ones. Trout can get to be very old. And I've seen trout and I've caught trout that could be upwards of five to 10 years old even. So these things have seen a lot. They've made it through a long life, they've seen line, they know what's bad and what's good for them. And so being able to tie a bumper on or any kind of fluorocarbon or monofilament bumper to the end of that braided line is very, very important. Here I have a 10 pound tough line fluorocarbon bumper. I've tied that with a blood knot. There's a multitude of uni knots that you can do here. There's uni knots, surgeon's knot, Alberto knot, the blood knot. Just pick one that you can tie well, and if not, tie a tiny little barrel swivel in between there so that you can add that clear line that's less intrusive at the end of your line before you tie your jig on. My bumper here is probably about seven to 10 feet long. You don't want it to be too long because then it'll get kind of cumbersome to cast. So I have about a seven foot bumper of 10 pound fluorocarbon. This is tough line fluorocarbon, straight down to my sculpin jig. Now the business end, the meat and potatoes, if you will, and it's the jig. This one's a little wet because I've already been fishing it today and we've been nailing fish. So I'm gonna pull out of my pocket the box of goodies. 
and there's not a lot of places to find these. I've actually, there is some uh, videos here on Addicted Fishing where I actually tie these on camera. Uh, and there's even a couple on the Stay Fishy channel. If you guys didn't know, I also have a second channel, kind of a, a spin-off of Addicted and Stay Fishy Adventures. And I've tied these on camera a few times. If not, there's a few other tutorials online from Bill Herzog himself, the guy who showed me how to do this on how to tie these jigs. So it makes it kind of a fun and very hands-on experience being able to tie up your own jig. And these are very simple. It's just a rabbit fur jig and go out and have fun catching fish on it. Very gratifying experience. But what I have here is a box full of goodies. These are my ties here. Some of these other ones I've gotten from friends and other people that some custom jig tires. And the key is, again, to have very natural, very, very natural presentations. If you again put a couple of pictures of Sculpin here in the bottom of the screen, you guys can see how I'm kind of matching that color contrast. Some of them have red gills, some of them are lighter colored depending on where you're at in the country or what kind of rock bottom that these things have because these things live down and in between all the rocks on the bottom of the river. So that being the case, that's how they hide. So when they come up and out and they start swimming around, that's when these fish are going to be preying on them and swooping in and grabbing them. So you can see I have a multitude of different colored heads. I got my black, I got my like kind of a peachy colored. I got my very, very natural colors. And again, I have my very typical sculpin patterns here and in different sizes. I have eighth ounce and I have quarter ounce. Not too often do I find I need to go over a quarter ounce of weight uh, because I want this thing to fall down slowly. I want it to look like a real fish swimming and I don't want it to look like a steelhead or a salmon jig that's jumping up and down super fast. I want this thing swimming just like a little sculpin would coming up off the bottom looking for food and then getting nabbed by a big old trout. So, another quick look at the box. Take a look at my box. It's a good one. And now it's time to fish. Come on, Tiny. <sighs> All right, that's how to do. Now, First and foremost, the beauty of twitching a jig is there is not a single piece of water in the world that a jig could not be fished in. It, from rapids to walking speed water to literally in a lake, this is a very effective method in any kind. It's just how you're going to fish it. It's how you're going to present it and how much time you're going to let that thing sink. If I'm fishing fast water like I am here, I'm going to be focused on keeping that thing off the bottom and out of the rocks. If I'm in walking speed water, I'm going to focus on searching for bottom, finding that happy medium in between letting it sink all the way to the bottom and getting that nice rapid presentation back to me. And if I'm in a lake situation, I'm going to just be swimming this thing like a normal fish. So we're going to step through each style of water as we go here, hopefully finding fish in each of them. And what we have behind us is a rapid. Watch and learn. So in a situation like this where we have moving water, I'm going to really refrain from casting anywhere above 90 degrees across. And 90 degrees to me is straight across the river. If I'm going to be staying in my 45s, this would be 45 up, this would be 45 down. And if I'm fishing any sort of moving water like this, I'm going to focus more on a swinging presentation. I'm going to cast at 90 degrees, I'm going to let that thing sink, and I'm going to work it across my 45 degree angle rather than casting an upriver, trying to let it sink, and ultimately getting snagged in the rocks on the upriver side, which is going to be really hard to get out. So the way I'm going to start this is I'm going to go close. I'm going to cast just basically to where I can't see the bottom. And as I come across here, I'm going to let that current do the work. I didn't give it any line. That thing hit the water. And I'm just going to make very small, very subtle jigs all the way back here. It's not a twitching jig like you're fishing for salmon. We don't want that thing to shoot much more than about two to three inches at a time. It's going to be going just like a little fish swimming off the bottom, trying to skip around the rocks and ultimately getting in front of those predatory fish. So now that I made that close cast, I'm going to go a little bit further. I'm going to go about one third of the way across the river. And as that thing starts to catch the current and swing, I'm going to keep my hand off the reel. I'm going to use that current to my ability, waiting to feel for that bottom, waiting for that thing to stick. And I'm just going to slowly work that thing back towards the bank. A lot of times what's going to happen with a jig presentation like this is these fish are going to see that jig and they're going to track it and follow it until they find that perfect opportunity to hit it. So in that case, I want to make sure to fish that all the way into the bank so that last point that that fish is going to have to be able to come and grab my jig. Now that I hit that one third, I'm going to go about halfway across the river. I'm going to wait till I feel the bottom there. There was the bottom and I'm just going to start swimming it. We're just swimming, just like Dory. Just keep swimming. And in a situation like this where we have a lot of current, it doesn't hurt to just let that thing swing also. Just like you would imagine in that little sculpin's down there trying to fight the current, he's getting pushed across, swinging into a little soft spot where those fish are gonna be sitting, and then whammy. We made it all the way into the bank, and I'm actually gonna fish this one up 
just a little bit further up the bank here. Okay. All right, now that I've worked that little area in front of me, I've casted about 40 to 50 feet out. I know I've swung my jug 40 to 50 feet down. I'm gonna take about 10 big boy steps down river, find a new rock, and do that same method of close, middle, far, and swinging that thing down as I'm getting further and further down into the soft water, looking for where the congregation of fish is gonna be. All right, so this spot, I have a lot of depth right in close to me here. So I'm gonna make that first cast only about 10 to 15 feet out. I'm gonna work that area first that those fish might actually see me. Because I'm obviously making a lot of commotion on the bank here. A lot of times if you have clear water, you wanna be stealthy. Don't wear your construction shirt. Don't wear a big white sweatshirt. Maybe wear a camo shirt or something that blends in a little bit more uh, with the bank next to you so that you're not scaring those fish that you're fishing right on top of. So I'm gonna go about 10 more feet out. And here, I have just enough current to not reel. I'm just gonna walk that thing over nice and, nice and lackadaisical. Just helpless little fish out enjoying his day. Oh, there he was. There was our first bite. Smacked it on the fall. And that's normally gonna be the case here, guys. It's not gonna be so much as you're twitching up when you're gonna feel these fish. If you let that thing fall, if you get it into those soft spots and let it go down towards the bottom and you go to lift, that's when you're gonna feel that initial bite. So the key is to not really set too hard once you do feel that bite. You're just gonna lift your rod tip, reel as fast as you can and bring that line tight to that fish's mouth and let him do the rest of the work in setting the hook. All right, we've worked that little section. I'm gonna go about another 50 feet down river, start off with my process. All right, we've made our way down and it is quite slower water. I didn't find any fish up in that faster stuff, but I think it might be is my jig may not be heavy enough to get down and stay in front of those fish. One thing I do notice a lot of the time, especially in the moving water, is if I can keep my jig in front of that fish for more than two or three jigs at a time, a lot of times that will attract a bite, more so than if it's coming past them at a rapid rate. Why that is, is because it almost pisses them off, I think. It gives them a couple seconds to really look at it, see that it's there, get some agitated, and then they strike. So what's changing though, as I start getting further and further down into the slower water, is I'm not casting quite as much as an angle across the river. I'm casting a little bit more up, probably about 10 degrees up river of 90 degrees, and I'm just slowly letting that thing get down to the bottom, and I'm flirting with those rocks in the bottom a little bit more than I would in that fast water. And that is because I have that speed and I have that ability to keep that jig going up and around all those big boulders, so I can start casting a little bit further up to get that jig down and closer in front of those fish but still sticking to my close middle far and covering water. That's the thing about this presentation, we're hunting for the big fish. We're not necessarily looking for any of the small little stalker trout, we wanna find those big guys. So we're gonna keep our methods of moving, we're gonna keep our systematic casting, and we're gonna keep moving down river after about every four or five casts and covering the whole spread that we have in front of us. All right, so we broke off, and if it's not obvious enough, we're in the boat now. And what can really work, especially if you're in an area that you can go to both sides of the river, sometimes switching angles on these fish can really work well. I was fishing from the deep, fast current side, and this time I'm on the slow current side casting into the deep. So let's give it a shot, see if our odds change. Same method, especially now that I'm actually going with the current. Like if I'm on a bank like this where I can actually walk and fish, a lot of times fishing that thing through like that, allowing that jig to have a lot longer drift can really up your chances. Because again, this is a presentation where these fish will track. These things will see it from a distance, they'll come over, take a look at it, watch it, make sure it's wounded, make sure that they're able to actually hit and kill that prey, and then they'll hone in right at the last minute. We're swimming, we're swimming, we're enjoying our day. 
we're trying to be eaten. Soft part of a piece of water here. We're getting down into the into the zone. Oh, there he is! Got him! Got him! Oh, he just slammed it. That a boy, little. Finally! Finally! Oh, that's a nice fish too. Look at him! What a beautiful rainbow! Oh wow! Just stung him right in the nose. Oh, here you have it, everyone. There it is. Oh wow, what a nice fish. There you have it, folks. Beautiful little wild rainbow munching on the old sculpt in there. Wow, what a great fish. All right, see you later, buddy. Whew. Well, there you have it, everybody. The bite is obviously a little off today. We fished really hard for that fish, but I want to show you guys how amazing and how effective this thing can really be. So here's a cut to some clips of how effective this thing can be in very similar water conditions to what we're fishing today. Oh, oh, really? oh good one. Oh, Slammer Rama Duda. Oh man, Bendo. Bendius Maximus. What a cool looking fish in the sun. First fish ever on a dick fishing caught on a switching dig, a trout that is. We Check will. this thing out. So cool. Rod, he's all bent up. I don't have a small one here, kitties. This is a large creature. Oh, oh buddy. That's still beauty. Oh wow, my, look at there. Yeah. Look Woo. at the health and just the chunkiness of that fish, everybody. Holy smokes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Nice. Not the biggest one in the world. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh man. Very fresh too. In the in the slackest water I cast it. That was neat. Gorgeous. Look at the spots on his fins. <sighs> what a day out on the water, everybody. I want to thank you all so much for joining us here on another amazing tutorial. And let's see those comments below on what you guys think of the trout twitching. Do you think it's going to work? Do you think you'll have fun doing it? And do you even like the idea? I know it's one of my very favorite ways to fish nowadays, especially for trout. So I would highly recommend that you guys all go out there, give it a try. Try tying some up at home for yourself. Kind of a new fun activity and again thank you all so much for tuning in this week until next week same time same place you all stay fishy we'll see you out there